Hey everybody, today at Warmoth it is Arts and Crafts Day. So fretboard radius and compound radius are pretty simple concepts, but if you never had them explained to you, sometimes you're left wondering, where does that measurement come from? I don't understand how it all works. Well, today we're going to try and explain that. And to help me, I've created some visual aids, or as we like to call them in the Warmoth studio, uh, practical effects. And the first practical effect that I've created is this cylinder, which is going to help me explain straight fretboard radius. So as you probably know, the fretboard on all guitar and bass necks has a curve to it across its width and it goes along the entire length and that is called the fretboard radius. You may have wondered where does that radius come from or how do we arrive at that number? Well, that's what this cylinder is for. This cylinder represents a very small radius. We're going to imagine that it's a seven and a quarter inch radius. So if I were to take this neck and put it in this cylinder like so, and I were to take the curve of this cylinder and match it exactly on this fretboard, and the radius of this cylinder were seven and a quarter inch, then we would say that the radius of this fretboard is seven and a quarter inch. Now here's a much larger cylinder, and it's a little floppy because it's made out of construction paper, so you're just gonna have to imagine that this is staying nice and round, and we're gonna say that this cylinder has a 16 inch radius. And if I were to take that guitar neck and put it in this cylinder and match the fretboard curve to the curve of this cylinder along that two inch strip, then we would say that this neck has a fretboard with a 16 inch radius. And if you put this small radius cylinder inside the big radius cylinder, you can see that the small radius is much more dramatically curved along that two inch section than the big radius is. So if you have a fretboard with a small radius like seven and a quarter inches, that means it's going to be very curved. If you have a fretboard with a large radius like 16 inches, that the fretboard is still gonna be curved, but it's gonna be much more flat. So why would you want one over the other? Well, typically a small radius fretboard like seven and a quarter, which is very curved, is gonna be more comfortable to play on because that curve more naturally matches the curve of your hand but it does come with drawbacks, mostly um, when you try and sit your action low and bend strings. As you're pushing those strings across the width of that fretboard, they're gonna fret out or, or basically die because as, as you push that note across the fretboard, it's gonna touch frets along its length and that string is just gonna stop vibrating. Conversely, if you have a fretboard with a very flat radius, like 16 inches, you're gonna give up some of that comfort, but the upside is you can play all over that neck with very low action and bend strings and everything is gonna play cleanly. And my last visual aid is this cone. And a cone is basically a cylinder that has a really big radius on one end and a really small radius on the other end. And if you were to take that same guitar neck and put it in the cone like so, and then match the curve of that fretboard to the two inch section of the cone, what you're gonna end up with is a neck that has a very small radius at the headstock end and a very large flat radius at the end that joins the body, and then a perfect transition, a perfectly gradual transition between the two along the length of the neck. And so what you end up with is kind of a best of both worlds neck where you have a very small, round radius at the, you know, the typical cording area that transitions up to a very flat radius up in the, you know, single note playing area. So your bends and everything are going to be clean, but you have maximum comfort down here where you're typically playing chords. So Warmoth offers a ton of radius choices when you buy a neck. We sell straight radius, um, AKA a radius that is the same all along the neck. We sell a seven and a quarter one, which is very small and typical of vintage fenders. And then we sell a nine and a half inch straight radius, which is typical of modern fenders. And from there, we go up in half inch increments all the way to 16. So you can get a nine and a half straight, a 10, 
10 and a half, 11, 11 and a half, et cetera, all the way up to 16. Uh, you just specify what you want and you got it. As far as compound radius goes, we offer three. The, the one that we pioneered back in the 80s and we've been selling for decades is the 10 inch to 16 inch compound radius. We've sold tens of thousands of those. Um, we also offer two others. If you want something that's on the rounder, that kind of stays on the rounder end of the spectrum, we offer a nine and a half to 14 compound radius. That's very similar to what Fender is now offering on their elite strats and tellies. If you want something that, that airs towards the flatter end of the spectrum, we offer a 12 to 16 inch radius, which is uh, the compound radius that you will see like on Jackson's or Charvel's. And if you're wondering why we chose a 10 to 16 inch compound radius as the warmest standard compound, it, the answer is simple. We chose 10 inch at this end because we wanted to make sure that it was compatible with Floyd Rose nuts and Floyd Rose nuts are a 10 inch radius. Um, if you get the nine and a half to 14, it's still gonna be compatible really. There's, the, the difference is very slight. And if you choose a 12 to 16 inch compound, it's still gonna be fine. The, the difference between those is so slight at this end that it will still work just fine. And that is everything you need to know about fretboard radius. If you still have questions, make sure and check out the Warmoth website or give our customer service reps a call. And until next time, keep on picking. <laughs>